Modeling in Hoi 4. What expansion is this? 3D modeling, to be precise. John works on behalf of Paradox as a 3D artist, and he outsources lots of work to uh, make 3D art for Hearts of Iron 4. And this Deb Dyer will explain the process, how something as mundane as just a, a modeling game like this uh, is actually quite a complex process, how to construct this in game to get it as the final product in Hearts of Iron 4. So initially, they need to find reference material for said tanks. Now think about this for a second. We have have examples of T-34s and Tiger tanks that exist in museums at the moment. You can go visit them. We can measure them. We can actually see the depths and size of these vehicles and what camo they were used to paint. However, some of these tanks, for instance, for the Scandinavian countries who didn't have sophisticated tank programs, finding the scales for these models and actual reference materials might be a little bit more difficult because there is a chance that some of these tanks might not even actually have working examples that are still around today. It's kind of interesting to see this, like these just these turrets here. They're not complete tanks. Thanks. You got to work with what you've got. So you got to look at the angles and shapes and scales and watching videos can be useful. Just be aware though. Think about it for a second. If they've not got a like for like reference that they can visit and touch, it's going to be difficult to get the exact proportions just right because you don't want to make this smaller Swedish tank comparable to a size of like a Tiger tank, for instance. You need to keep the scales just right. And once again, reference material is important to know kind of how big or how small a tank is actually going to be. Okay, they start off with a blackout. This is just to get an idea of the shapes to copy it from the reference materials Let's look at all the corners it's got holy polygons batman it is what it is it is simple shapes just to get a basic outline of a low detail version of what the tank is going to look like as a reference material to use as a beginning template to work for later on can you guess the names of these vehicles i'm going to be totally honest with you i don't think i can name a single one so we have an armored car a plane here <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I can't even name one of them. So it says here, they disable the lights and then they reference the 3D models. And if you can kind of know what these tanks are based on just this silhouette, you're heading in the right direction. Next up is the high poly versions, a detailed tank. Creating a detailed version of the model without any polygon limits. So you can see here, we are no longer have corners. Everything is deliciously smooth. Oh, is that a uh, diamond pickaxe? Nice. Goodness, that is absolutely beautiful. Check out the curves on her. Now, the biggest issue with this is they can't use this in game because the poly count is way, way too high. It's good for individual single renders or small animations. The problem with this is it has to be run in real time. And unfortunately, high polys is very stressful on your CPU, GPUs. So we need to drop the poly count to a realistic amount so it can actually be used and animated in game. Oh, and here we go. So these are the high poly versions of a presume of those previous blackouts we just saw before. Now we have have the low poly version so which is actually usable and playable in games so you can see now things become less smooth and things become kind of more a little bit more jaggies to represent the poly i always wondered in the future when we've got really advanced gpus whether we would have high resolution polys actually in game maybe to a stage we'll drop the polys by i don't know 20 or 30 percent and it's not even noticeable to the human eye but we're playing them as old, almost they are like the full rendered versions the ultimate challenge here is to try and reduce the poly count so the usable in game so it doesn't cook your computer while simultaneously preserving the quality of the model to begin with and this is the low poly version it still looks pretty good but as you can see now you haven't got full circles now there are kind of edges to the circle to reduce the overall poly counts next up is the uv mapping creating a 2d map of the model to paint on so here we go so it's almost like they've kind of like unfolded the tank and it's now flat and two-dimensional and then you can paint it and then like assemble it back up again as if it's like a a skin on the tank itself. I always thought it was kind of funny when you looked at like old first person shooter textures because like the faces would be like proportionally stretched and very weird looking and kind of alien like and kind of freaky actually. The best way to think of this is it's kind of like a cardboard folded cutout. And when you make it completely flat, this is what it kind of looks like. But then when you assemble it, it's this. Next up is the texturing part. And you can see the individual parts that are textured. Oh, oh, I see the textures are changing over time as it's adding more and more layers of detail. So the first skin, and we're getting more textures and more details, each with individual improvements in the skins. Painting the models using a program called Substance Painter, which involves projecting details from high detail models onto a low detailed one. Camouflage will be made a little bit larger than real life to make the texture appear less cluttered from a distance. That's actually a really good point if they did really good camo in game wouldn't it be camouflaging it with the map 
which kind of would defeat the purpose of actually seeing it on the map. So perfectly camoed, the tank is invisible and you can't see it at all, even in game. Now that is a level of detail that we'd never reach. Okay, next up is rigging and animating. Adding bones and joints to the model for animation. So as you can see, these are the individual joints. They're like, they're kind of like moving parts, the arms of the tank on the inside, but the parts that will actually mechanically move. So you can see it actually moving now as it uses its suspension and moves its turret. It shows these are the movable working parts of the tank. I can imagine modeling for Hoi 4 when you're using, let's say, tank models and also using vehicles that don't necessarily have a lot of movement and animation cycles. It's probably a lot easier in Hoi 4 than it is for, let's say, I don't know, another mainstream tank game use your imagination which you can move it in all three dimensions so therefore i can imagine the complexity goes up massively because these bones on this tank look relatively simple compared to some of the movement cycles that i've seen in uh for instance first person shooters for instance that are, include drivable tanks pew it shoots we also have the snowmobile as well. There's something about the shape of this snowmobile that really upsets me. It's almost like it's uh, kind of reminds me of a rubbish skip with skis and a propeller on the back. <laughs> it's very, the corners are very sharp, aren't they? Of course, Paradox are based upon an actual working model. And uh, the cursed fins have created this absolutely horrific beast. It reminds me of a Thunderbird a little bit. Don't you, don't you get that vibe as well? You painted this green no am i the only one okay and with that our tank is ready to wreak havoc on the battlefield things are under development so changes may happen here and there but i hope i was able to give you some interesting insight to 3d art of hearts of iron 4 the question i would really like to know the answer to is how far in development did they start producing these vehicles because they're not really needed for the dev diaries other than like the graphic showcases which is kind of near the end and they're not involved in the focus tree progress or many of the key features so it kind of makes me wonder like at what point does the three model really even needed is it is it developed from the early days or is it developed near the end i would imagine somewhere near the end a little bit of a short one today guys just focusing on 3d models this is kind of a bit of a filler dev diary i imagine we hopefully in the future this is me wishing here we get to see more breakdowns of the new features in the future expansions and maybe some of the smaller updates uh hopefully might fundamentally change how the game is played i always love those dev diaries they're my favorites guys i'll see you soon if you want more of this kind of content you can click here have a good day Bye bye